Economics is about choices. Every day you trade time, money, and energy for what matters most. In this class, I'll show you simple tools like supply and demand, opportunity costs, and incentives that can use at your job, in your budget, or starting a business. By the end of the video, you'll think more clearly, negotiate better, or make decisions that grow your wealth over time. Glad you're here. This course will make economics practical. We will connect big ideas to real life, paychecks, prices, debt, and investing at risk. You'll learn to read the signals of a market, spot good opportunities, avoid costly mistakes and build a plan for what you can stick to limits alternatives and choices people want a lot of different things but when you boil down to it we only need a few basics to survive air water food clothes and a place to live we don't just want a plain water out of a creek we want bottled water sodas fruit juices and something with flavor or convenience instead of just berries and nuts we want salads burgers and pizza and it doesn't stop with food we want tvs internet education national security smartphones phones, healthcare, and the list goes on. Society has resources to work with. We've got people and their skills, managers to organize things, tools, and machines to do the heavy lifting, and natural resources like land and minerals. The truth is, what we want is way more than what our limited resources can actually produce. When we put these resources to work in the economy, they turn into goods and the services we use every day to meet our wants. At the end of the day, we're all forced to make choices. That's what economics is really about. It's the study of how people, businesses, and even whole societies make the best choices they can when resources are limited. Scarcity and choice. Scarcity limits our options and force us to choose. Since we can't have everything, we got to decide what we'll take and what we'll give up. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Sure, someone might buy you lunch so it feels free to you, but it still costs some. Farmers had to grow the food, workers had to prepare it, resources like land and equipment went into making it. To get more of one thing, we had to give up the chance to get something else. In other words, choosing one option means losing the next best alternative we could have had with those same resources. Those same resources could have been used to make something else. By making the lunch, society gave up chance to produce other goods and services. That's the trade-off. What will opportunity cost? Economics call the trade-off an opportunity cost. It means that to get more of one thing, we had to give up the next big alternative that we could have made with those same resources. Is Facebook free? Think about Facebook. Every year it spends over $50 billion on servers, employees, and updates. Yet to more more than 3 billion people, Facebook feels free. So here's the best question. Did Facebook actually find a way to escape scarcity? No, Facebook hasn't escaped scarcity. Scarcity is permanent, but what Facebook has done is cover its mass cost without charging a user a single dime. Instead, it makes alternatives pay. In fact, companies spend over $100 billion a year to run ads and boost content on Facebook. Also, you can get a target like you and me or hook you for future sales. Facebook keeps access free to maximize attention. We pick what gives the most bang for our buck. With limited time, energy, and money, we aim to maximize satisfaction, not act of randomness. Drive DoorDash on Saturday instead of Netflix. Money now or entertainment. We aim on purpose even when we mess up. We can be impulsive, follow the crowd, or use bad logic, but we're still trying to get an outcome on what we want. Self-interest isn't selfishness. Businesses get paid when they make customers happy. Income comes from meeting someone else's wants. People donate or volunteer because it feels good and aligns with their values. You remember when COVID, everybody was buying toilet paper. I mean, we was going to have a whole World War III with toilet paper being missing and them grabbing it all off the shelves. Well, now we see that happen just because the news were sparking a fear of toilet paper running out, which increased the demand of toilet paper and there's being a limited supply on the shelves at Walmart. So now you had Uncle Rodney and Auntie Chihuahua, well, they was fighting over toilet paper in aisles and it was just a whole bunch of greed of toilet paper, which this increases the price of toilet paper due to the demand increase and this it tells us that whenever we see a huge increase in demand or a huge propaganda or something on the news or media that sparks consumers to go buy a product on the store and make it seem like it's only scarce, it's a scarce item, it's not everywhere you can't get it. <coughs> this causes a spark of people running in the volume into the store and to, to greeting the product and making sure that they run that product out of the shelves. Marginal analysis, comparing benefits and costs. Economics makes decisions by comparing marginal benefits benefits, what you gain from one more to marginal cost, what you give up from one more. Every choice equals extra benefit versus extra cost. Economists think at the margin. Don't ask, should we buy a ring? Ask, is the next upgrade worth it? Compare the extra sparkle status and happiness to the extra dollar interest and delays to other goods. Extra benefit more than extra cost. You and your partner are ring shopping. Should you buy a bigger carry? Marginal benefit. Looks larger status, daily happiness, marginal cost. It's extra money, price, higher insurance, and the financing 
less money for wedding and honeymoon. So these are things that you should be asking yourself versus the, the marginal benefit and the marginal cost. Is it actually benefiting you or is it just a feeling that behind it that makes you want to increase your status to improve the Jones? Or is it actually a real financial marginal cost that you're making right now? Is it going to be higher interest you're paying over time? Every yes is a no to something else. Because resources are scarce, getting the next benefit always means paying the next cost. Giving up your best alternative. That gives up opportunity cost. Theories, principle, and model. Economics is a science. Observe, hypothesize, test, and conclude, predict. Observing real behavior and outcomes like we've seen in the toilet paper during the pandemic. Like my mama even grabbed some toilet paper for us. This is what happens whenever you see a trend of behavior due to maybe media or news outlets reacting to fear. Based off those things, those people might grab up all the toilet paper. Some people might be feared and that can equal up them to grabbing up all the toilet paper. Based on these observations, formulate a possible explanation of cause and effect. One thing always leads to another. Testing this explanation by comparing outcomes of specific events to the outcome predicted by the hypothesis. Accepting, rejecting, modifying the hypothesis based on these comparisons. Continuing to test the hypothesis against the facts, a favorable result and accumulate, the hypothesis evaluates into a theory. There are some other things you should know about economic principles. When price falls, people usually buy more. When price rises, they buy less. That's the typical price quantity relationship. Economics often show ideas of graphs, axis, label, what changes lines, show relationships and shift versus moves along the curve tell different stories. Oh, my God.